Vice Speaker B.J. Cruz is accusing the Cabo administration of not being truthful and alleges they've been caught in a $10 million lie. And Troy was able to say only 2.9 had been granted, I believe. I, but anyway, he used it that it was only 2.9. But actually, that was all that had been, as of that date probably, had actually been redeemed. That the truth of the matter is, as John's FOIA at response showed, that as of February 28th, he had granted $13 million worth of, $13.3 million worth of tax credits to six landowners. Cruz says based on documents from Revan Tax, the administration authorized $13.3 million to six former Lazon land property owners as of the end of February. He says that's a large margin of error of more than $10 million over the governor's $2.9 million estimate on March 7th. The governor's director of communications, Troy Torres. Those are two different um, figures that he's talking about. The $2.9 million uh, in tax credits paid or transferred, those were the tax credits that were redeemed. The $13 million that he's talking about are tax credits that were authorized. Those were not tax credits that were redeemed. The tax credit in lieu of cash payment program was enacted into law in 1977. It provides tax credits to a landowner whose rural property had been acquired by the government of Guam when it cannot make cash payment due to the unavailability of funds. The government, as we reported, is under a court order to pay Lazon landowners $26 million, but with interest accruing at $100,000 a month, that's climbed to about $30 million. DOA Director Benita Manglonia told KUAM they decided to use the program after looking at the interest that kept growing. She said the credits were issued in order to prevent taxpayers from being liable for even more. Torres, meanwhile, defends Adaloop hasn't done anything illegal. The over 30-year-old law allows landowners, not just the Lazon landowners, to avail themselves of this means of payment. Actually, the law says that when the government of Guam uh, has an obligation to landowners for land that they've taken from landowners, that's, you know, that's, that's as though the government of Guam went to you and, and, and went to your mother and father's place and took their land away and then refused to pay them fair market value of it. In a case like that, uh, the law that the legislature passed years ago says that the government of Guam shall compensate landowners uh, with these tax credits when cash is not available. Cruz agrees that issuing tax credits isn't illegal, adding when he read a Guam OPA report from 2007, he understood that the program was dormant and regrets not taking up the recommendation to repeal the law at the time. I'm not saying there was any illegal activity. I'm saying that th th we we can and should have repealed it. And, what, and the other is that we should have been made apprised of how much was going out. Torres adds there are existing authorizations under the law, and if the legislature doesn't want these to be legal mechanisms to make these payments, then it's up to the lawmakers to make the changes. We would hope that uh, if they are going to um, repeal that law, they would need to provide the administration with another solution to pay down obligations. Cruz happens to be the co-author of legislation to suspend the tax credit in lieu of cash payment program. He says he doesn't have a problem with coming up with solutions to pay down the government's obligations. Let the legislature make the determination. Let us appropriate that and put it in the budget. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Ken Quintaniza.